I've been shooting with this camera for approximately a week now, and uh, it's a great camera, but I don't really know who this camera is for. <laughs> I just want to start this video out by saying, uh, hey, hope everything's good, and uh, if this is your first time watching me, hope you'll enjoy the content. And um, I will also say that Sony did send this camera over to me to do some testing before it was released, but they don't have any saying off this video, nor do they get to see it before you do. So, now you know. If you've been here on the channel for a while, you probably know that I'm shooting with a Sony A7S III as my main shooter. It's all good, it survived. <laughs> Classic pizza. And uh, it's also the camera that I'm shooting with right now. And the reason that I like the A7S III so much is that it is a great photo camera, but it is one beast of a video camera. And since I'm shooting like probably 30% photos and then 70% videos, this camera is so well suited for me. But with the FX3, they're taking it into another direction. It's moving up into like, dedicated video camera rather than trying to make a hybrid camera. And as you can see, it doesn't have any viewfinder here up top, such as the a7S 3 but it's also not something that I'm personally missing because I'm so used to using the flip-out screen, and this also has a flip-out screen. How weird is it that you now actually can vlog with a cinema line camera if you want to do that? That is insane. And one of the biggest features, I think, is the grip that is way beefier on this than the A7S III. However, though, my pinky is still falling like under the grip, so even though it's deeper like this, I still would, would have loved it to be a little bit longer, right? but this is probably something that you can solve with like a battery pack or something similar. One of the things that I noticed with the grip is that this point right here is very sharp and when you can compare it to the A7S III, you can see that this is way like sharper than up here. And this kind of like cuts in to my hand when I'm holding it, so I can't hold it, hold, hold it as, comfortably, comfort, as comfortably as I can with the A7S III, even though the grip is deeper. It also has like a built-in cage into the entire body, so you have different kind of like screw holes where you can attach different things such as a top handle or a monitor or something similar depending on what you want to do and the sensor in the camera is a full frame sensor which is the same sensor that you'll find in the a7s3 and it also has three different title lights that lights up when you're recording one up here on the rec button and then one here in the back and then one here in the front. And this is actually something that I'm missing on my A7S III because there's been so many times that I haven't recorded something that I wanted to record, and this helps you remember that you're actually recording. Tally lights, good thing. The ports on the camera is basically the same as the A7S III. You have the full HDMI, the headphone output, and the microphone input, the micro USB, the USB-C, and those are basically all the ports that you need on a modern camera. All the buttons is basically entirely adjusted so that your thumb rests on all the quick functions that you might need when you're shooting videos, such as the rec button, the joystick, the white balance, the ISO, and then you have a zoom function that you don't have on the A7S III. Unfortunately, there's no mode wheel up here on top. Instead, you have the mode button here in the back, which allows you to press it and then change the mode as you want. I am personally a huge fan of the mode wheel, so I've set up my different ones for mode one, two, and three. 
So instead of having to pressing a button and then turning, I just like flick a switch and then it's done, ready to go shoot. That is something that I would love to see, but I totally understand that they don't have it because they included the cage into the camera instead. It also has a built-in fan into the body with a vent right here and right here. And when you have the camera turned on, you can hear it when you have it this close to your ear. But as soon as you move away from it, you can basically hear nothing. Like it's completely silent. So if you want to shoot infinite amount of videos in the middle of the Sahara, then I guess you can do that because the recording limit is set to like, or the tested recording is like 60 frames per second for like 13, 13, 13. 13 hours consecutive shooting. Is that how you say it? Consecutive. Con continuous. Continuous shooting. And I mean like since the A7S III you can shoot 4K 120 FPS for around like one and a half hour without overheating. I have no doubts that this camera can go for an infinite amount of time whenever you want to. Even though this is cinema line camera, you don't get the built-in variable ND filters that you do in the FX6 and that is kind of a bummer because now you have to use variable ND filters on your lens if you want to have that instead of having the built-in ones. At the recording of this video, the FX3 has something that the A7S III doesn't have and that is S-Cinetone, which makes the footage look so good coming straight out of camera. So the reason that I said in the beginning of this video that I don't really know who this camera is for is because there's basically nothing that you get with this camera that you don't get in the a7s3. I totally understand that this is more for professionals that want to have a smaller camera that you can like screw things into or maybe mount to a different uh, setup or something similar. And that is something that you can't do with the a7s3. But performance wise, these are basically the same cameras, the same sensor, the same like color science, the same look and everything. But the FX3 has an internal fan and a built in cage. So if I were to buy a cinema camera myself, I probably would have gotten for the FX6 instead of the FX3. And if I'm going to buy a new camera, I'm probably going to buy another A7S III. But I would love to know, I would love to hear, what do you think about the FX3? Do you think it's good? Do you think it's weird? Do you think it's bad? Do you think it's cool? Do you think it's like, oi, damn, do you want me to Do drop a comment down below because I would love to hear and uh, talk about it. Right? And uh, really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. And uh, oh, there's just like, there's a lot of things going on here at the same time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Appreciate that you watched. Thanks so much. I will see you in the next video. Peter from Sweden is out.